In this video, I'll discuss the new enhancements included in eTabs version 22.0. Okay, let's take a look at what's been included. For modeling, an enhancement was made to add the capability for automatic generation of frame nonlinear hinges based on recommendations in ASC 4123. Now this includes information for steel beam, column, brace hinges, concrete beam, columns, shear walls, and I'll show you where that's located in the application. For analysis, serviceability assessment of steel frame floor systems subjected to walking vibrations, according to AISC Design Guide 11, Chapter 7, has been added. Some new steel design codes have been included, AISC 360.22, the CSA S16 2019 composite column design code has been added, and for steel joist design, new joist design code SJI 100 2020 has been added as well. A new concrete frame design code has been added, ASC 318 and 19. But the difference is joint shear is now performed for ordinary moment frames, intermediate moment frames, as well as special moment frames. I'll show you where that's located as well. Design results, enhancement made to speed up joist design using parallel processing, that's new in eTabs. For loading, response spectrum function has been included as well. New material libraries, auto wind load calculations for Australia and New Zealand code, Okay, so let's get started. Let's start with the new floor vibration option. Under the define menu, if we go to floor vibrations, excitation sets, here you can define an excitation set, which refers to a set of input values required by the program for the analysis of floor vibrations in steel frame structures. So if we click on add new excitation set, so this set includes key information, such as location of the vibration source and the location where the vibrations impact is measured. Also other parameters like damping value and associated modal case. So we'll just enter in a couple joints here. Click OK. Now the excitation sets have been defined. Now if we run the analysis, to view the floor vibration results, we'll go to display, floor vibration results, walking vibration. So the walking vibration analysis form enables the visualization of the floor vibration analysis results, specifically for the excitation sets marked with analysis type walking. Here we have the analysis method, design guide 11. Floor occupancy type denotes the occupancy usage of the floor being analyzed. We have pedestrian body weight, equivalent viscous damping, to ensure consistency, the damping value is taken from the modal damping used in the excitation set's steady state load case. So if we go down to the analysis summary, each excitation set may have two associated rows in the table, one to display the results related to the low frequencies and another to the higher frequencies. Max, FRF, and dominant frequency. FRF is frequency response function. So here we have the excitation joint, response joint, DCR, design capacity ratio, a comparison of the predicted peak sinus acceleration and how it compares to the recommended limits for human comfort. The additional details panel provide the user with information related to the calculations. So here we have modal data, natural frequencies and periods of the current model, FRF data, a plot of acceleration measured at the response joint due to the loads applied through the steady state load case at the excitation joint. and the comfort limit plot, a plot that displays predicted acceleration values alongside recommended human comfort limits. So in this plot, the predicted acceleration is represented by a point and the comfort limit by a line. If all the points fall below the comfort line, the predicted accelerations are unlikely to cause human discomfort. Now, let's take a look at what new steel design and concrete design codes have been included. So under the design menu, we'll take a look at steel frame design, view revised preferences. Under steel design code, you can see AISC 360.22 code has been included. So for steel frame design, including AISC 341.22 seismic provisions, also for composite beam design, composite columns, as well as steel connection design, AISC 360.22 has been included. Also for composite column design, we go to view revised preferences, we can see that the CSA S1619 code has been included as well. So if we go down to a steel joist design, 
New joist design code SJ1100 for 2020 has been included. Also, a new type of steel joist section has been added, custom joist section whose definition includes component section data. So a detailed calculation report has been implemented. Once you run the analysis and design, you can access reports quite easily. So if, now if we look at concrete frame design, an enhancement was made to add joint shear design for ACI 318-19 concrete frame design. Joint shear is now performed for ordinary moment frames in seismic category B using the nominal flexure strength of the beams. This was also added for intermediate moment frames as well as special moment frames. Next, let's talk about hinges. So an enhancement was made to add the capability for automatic generation of frame nonlinear hinges based upon recommendations of ASCE 4123. Let me show you where that's located. So if we go to Assign, Frame, Hinges, if you click on Add Hinge for under the Frame Hinge Assignment Data, here you can see all the new codes that have been added. So for steel beam, column, and brace hinges using the reference standard ASC 342.22 as specified in the ASCE 4123 Chapter 9. Also, this has been implemented for concrete beam, column, shear wall, and coupling beam hinges using the reference standard ACI 369.122 as specified in ASCE 4123 Chapter 10. So you can see here all the options available to the user. Okay, let's take a look at auto wind load calculations. To define them, we'll go to define load patterns. We'll define a wind load. And for auto lateral load, these are all the codes that have been included. You can see Australia, New Zealand 1170 2021 has been now included. If we modify lateral load, you can see here that you can define wind exposure parameters, wind coefficients, all associated with the code. So when you run the analysis, we can take a look at a nice output report. To access the reports, we'll click on the Reports tab under the Model Explorer. Double-click on the Project Report to generate it. So if we scroll down, you can see under Loads, Auto Wind Loading, here is the Australia New Zealand code calculations. So as you can see, we have all the exposure parameters, factors and coefficients, lateral loading equations, as well as applied story forces. This can be found in a nice tabular format as well. Next, let's take a look at new material libraries and database that have been included. So under Define Material Properties, I can add a new material. And for steel material type, you can see these are the standards that have been included. The latest one, ASTM A1065, as well as 1065 for metric, is now included in the program. And if I click on material property data, you can see all the associated material weight and mass and mechanical property data has now been included. Next, Let's take a look at the enhancement that has been made to speed up joist design by using parallel processing. This option can be found underneath the Analyze menu, Advanced Design and Response Recovery Options. Here you can see number of threads for design and there are two options available, Program Determined and User Specified. Essentially, this sets the maximum number of threads design algorithms can use. Program Determined option is the default and allows design algorithms to use up to the number of physical cores simultaneous threads. The actual number of threads the design will use is displayed next to the option. So for user specified option, this enables you to explicitly specify the number of threads design algorithms can use. Each additional thread used for design requires additional memory, hence must be taken into consideration when specifying this value. It's typically recommended not to exceed the number of physical cores present on the system. Okay, lastly, there's been a new response spectrum function that has been included. To view that, we'll go to Define, Functions, 
response spectrum. Here are all the functions that have been included in eTabs. Latest one being for Kyrgyzstan, KR22-2018. So we add a new function and we can take a look at all the parameters. You can define the function damping ratio. Here are all the period and acceleration values. And you can look at the plots using different plot options here. This concludes all of the new enhancements that are included in eTabs 22.0. Please visit our website, csiamerica.com, for more information. Thank you.